Hi, this is Ross Shane from Imagineer Systems. In this tutorial, we'll use Moki's planar tracker to track the motion here of the sign and the ground, remove the sign, and replace the sign using the tracking data. The tutorial is actually going to cover Moki and how it works with After Effects. Here in After Effects, let's look at the shot. And one of the real challenges with tracking the shot is the extreme motion blur and perspective on our ground plane and our sign. In fact, the grainy footage in the motion blur is very difficult to track with a point tracker. While the After Effects tracker can be good for lots of purposes, you can see here how quickly it fell off. Instead, I'm going to import my footage here into Moki. Here we're just going to create a new project and import our footage into Moki. Simply say yes that I do want to continue here. Here I can choose the duration of the clip that I'm bringing in. We do want to make sure that the frame rate matches the After Effects project or whichever compositor system you're going to be sending your data to. Moki's planar tracker is going to assist us in removing the sign and kind of automating some of the things that a compositor might have to manually do with clone offsets. Hold down the X key and click to pan the viewer. We can create an X spline and create a shape that represents the ground plane. Just click to add a point, and then with a right click or a control click to close the shape. In the Layers tab, I can give this shape a name. Here we'll just call it Ground. And then I can create another X spline. The second shape is going to be used to track the sign. As the sign is closer to the camera than the ground plane, it's going to go above the ground plane in layer order. And again, we'll simply select the layer and rename it. Here we'll call it sign. I'm going to create one more shape for the car door. By masking out the car door and tracking it, it will allow the ground plane layer to actually track through the whole shot. And we'll go ahead and name that just so we know which layer is which. Now I'm going to select the layer, which is going to be the tracking layer for the ground plane. I'm going to go to the Track tab and make sure that we turn on Perspective. Still in the Track tab, now we're going to hit the Track Backwards button. And to save ourselves some time, I'm going to take this 50 second worth of tracking and compress it into 4 seconds. Once this is tracked, I can take our view controls on the right hand part of the screen. I can turn on the surface, hide the layers, and then we can confirm that our tracking data is good by looking at the surface. Every shape layer in Imagineer products has a related surface. The surface represents the plane that's been tracked. You can use the surface in the grid to validate that you have good tracking data. And here we'll select our sign layer and look at that surface as well. We'll use this surface tracking data to replace our sign when we get back to After Effects. Again, your controls in your viewer allow you to hide the grid, hide the layers, hide the surface. Next, I want to focus on the shape around the sign because we're going to remove the sign. I'll turn on the Modify Range keyframe button to make sure that when I update the shape here that it's keyframed across the entire shot. The sign layer is still selected. We'll go to the Remove tab. In the Remove tab, there are options that will affect your render, and these have to do with the luminance changes, if there's a clean plate, or if the background clip has much detail. We're just going to leave the illumination model set to none and go ahead and render. What Moki's Remove tab is doing is using the tracked ground plane, analyzing the data and finding all the clean areas in that clip to use as an insert. It's quite impressive to see that Moki quickly removed the sign without any manual cloning or keyframing. For tutorial purposes, I'm going to live with the quality here. Next, we'll select our original clip in our viewer because we want to focus in here on the sign track. We can turn on the actual surface of the sign and adjust it so we can confirm that the tracking data is good. There's lots of ways to do this, including the adjust track module, stabilizing the viewer, and playing back with an insert. If I'm happy with my tracking data though, what I'm going to do is basically adjust where I really want the sign to be, and then we're going to export our tracking data for the After Effects corner pinner.
In this particular scenario, I'm actually going to use a sign that's already created in perspective in the shot. So what we want to do is go to our Layers tab and select Align Layer to reset the surface back to original frame. This is a great technique if you're using paint or clone or you're basically using an insert that's already created within perspective. At this point, we're going to go to File, Export Tracking Data, and send this to After Effects Corner Pinner. You can simply save this data as a .text file. And now that that is done, we're going to go to After Effects to finish up our composite. Next, we're going to import our clean frames that Moki rendered. Moki defaults to render to the results directory that's within your project directory. After Effects does have a tendency to interpret sequential files as 30 frames per second, so let's go ahead and use the interpret dialog here in After Effects to just make sure that this clip is the proper frame rate and dragging it down to my After Effects composition. We now have our clean background and we can replace the sign on top of it. And I simply just created this sign here in After Effects and again it's already created in perspective. Since the sign has already been scaled in the After Effects layer properties, I'm going to pre-compose it so that when I get my tracking data in here it's going to properly line up. Now to get our tracking data, what we'll do is simply bring up the tracking data in a text editor, copy it, go back to After Effects, and paste it right to our layer. Just remember to be on your first frame in After Effects when you paste this data. After Effects will interpret this as a corner pin effect. Moki's corner pin export data for After Effects does not support motion blur. So what I'm going to do just to finish this composite is pre-compose the layer then add the force motion blur effect to simulate motion blur. Those of you that own a license of Mocha or Mocha for After Effects version 2 know that this has been updated to support motion blur in later releases. And there you have it, Moki's remove tool was able to quickly remove the sign from a shot, create a clean plate, and send the tracking data for the sign back to After Effects to finish our composite. For Imagine Your Systems, this is Ross Shane.